Good morning. So it's Psalm 146 and it's page 470. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. And we have actually got a second reading, which is from Mark chapter 5, page 757, verse 18. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and all the people were amazed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, hello, everyone. Busy, I'm sorry about this. Um, my name um, is Connor. I have uh, the pleasure of being um, a mission partner uh, here at CCB, um, and I've been a member for, uh, I was just talking about some of this, eight years. Okay, all right. <laughs> no one's impressed with that. There's not that many of us that have been around for longer than eight years. Um, so yeah, thanks. All right, thanks. I think it's impressive. Um, no, um, but before we crack on uh, with uh, the kind of sermon today, um, it's worth knowing we're, we're doing a series. Um, and the, the series we're doing, we're doing the last kind of clump of psalms um, in the book of Psalms. Um, and I just want us to notice something about, about all the psalms that we're going to do over the next kind of five, uh, five years, no, <laughs> uh, five weeks. Um, so open up, go back to Psalm 146. Um, Tom pointed out that... Tom pointed this out to us. But I thought it's worth knowing that, that this is going to happen every week. At the beginning and end of, of all the Psalms that kind of close off uh, the book of Psalms, they start with, praise the Lord. And then they end with, praise the Lord. And then the next one, praise the Lord. And then at the end, praise the Lord. And praise the Lord 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 and praise the Lord. Um, and that's interesting for a number of reasons. One, it's, it's, you can see, right, this, the book of Psalms is one of the biggest books of the Bible. And it's all pointing, it all points towards praise. Um, but there's another reason why it's interesting for us in these kind of next five weeks. Um, is that we know the destination for every sermon that is going to pre preach for the next five weeks. The destination is praise. <laughs> um, every week, the kind of climax of the sermon, the climax of the Psalms, is going to be praise. And now everyone's terrified. Does that mean it's going to be boring? It's not going to be boring. And it's not going to be boring because each Psalm starts and ends with praise, but it gets there in a different way. So our job over the next five weeks um, is to enjoy, like, Five different ways that the Lord is going to get us to praise him. Um, each week, kind of looking at a different thing. Um, and it's going to be glorious, and it's going to be fun. So I'm going to pray for us today. Father, would we, um, well, would your word do what it's intended to? Um, would it help us today to praise? And I pray for us today, would, would you help us understand why this psalm will make us praise this week. 
And Father, keep us excited as we might come back again and again and again to think about why we might praise you. Amen. Amen. Um, I am going to start with a podcast recommendation for those of you that are interested. Um, I realized a couple of bits ago, uh, that my kind of knowledge of kind of historical figures slash influential uh, people was pretty limited. Uh, so I was looking for a podcaster to listen to because books are boring. No, I'm joking. They're not. Um, and I found a podcast called Evil Genius. Has anyone ever heard of it? Evil Genius of Russell Kane. So only me and Joe. Um, it's a great little podcast. Um, the idea of the podcast is that they take some kind of influential leader. Um, now, it doesn't have to be political, although it often is. They take some kind of leader, um, and they kind of evaluate them. Um, over, they have like a little panel of comedians, and they have four rounds, and each round you kind of get a fact, uh, or a, they call it a fact bomb. Um, this kind of bit of information that might change the way that you view uh, that leader. And it's funny. It's a really funny show. Uh, it's really enjoyable. But at times, it is really quite moving. So um, they did an episode where they uh, looked at Muhammad Ali. Um, that's what I mean. They're kind of in, not just political, influential leader of some kind. They looked at Muhammad Ali, um, the heavyweight boxing champion of the world. And what, what made this episode quite quite moving in and, amongst, in and amongst the comedy, was one of the panel members um, was black and was brought up in a, in a majority white environment. Um, and he talked about his experience of seeing Muhammad Ali on the TV for the first time. And he said, it was amazing. It was amazing to see a black hero, an actual celebrity that... That, I could, that he could look up to, that could, could inspire us. And he was the heavyweight boxing champion of the world. And it was amazing. Later in that episode, you start getting the, the fact bombs. Um, and I should probably say, this is all like allegedly, and it's, you go, go listen to the show because um, it'll be interesting. But ha later on in the show, they play an audio clip of... Muhammad Ali allegedly hitting his wife. And it's, you, could, you could hear it in the guy's voice of, oh, this is my hero. <laughs> and he'd done something like that. Another, another episode that they have is, uh, they have Che Guevara, they talk about Che Guevara. And one of the, one of the panels uh, was this working class lady who uh, comes from an immigrant family. Um, and she talked about her, her father being obsessed with Che Guevara. All the banners, all the t-shirts. He was a hero. Um, and rightly so. We, in, in the show, you get this fact bomb of, of Che Guevara got Cuba to being a 96% literacy rate on one of the poorest countries in the world. It was amazing. And then you get another fact bomb later on that he oversaw uh, the mass killing of hundreds of people. And again, you had this lady, this was, this was her hero, <laughs> this kind of influential leader. She, she looked up to him, but like Muhammad Ali, like Che Guevara, in fact, like every one of the people that they look at in this podcast, at some point you see that they fail people that, that they looked at, that they, they thought might bring some change, eventually, when you dig down deep enough, they fail. And it's interesting. Um, every one of the people we talk about, Muhammad Ali, Winston Churchill, Che Guevara, all these people that they, they kind of look at, uh, there is a, there's a common thread, something that links them all together, and that is that they're all dead, <laughs> Right? They take these kind of influential figures, these, these leaders. They kind of see that actually, well, none of them are squeaky clean. All of them have failed. And then you kind of have this sad moment where 
where you realize that, that all of them, no matter how hard they've tried to kind of bring some kind of change, well, they all die. <laughs> Every single one of them, despite their gifts, despite their promises, at some point, they all die and they all fail. I think one of um, the reasons why we find people, kind of leaders, so interesting is because I think deep down, all of us desperately want a hero. Desperately want someone that might save us. Because we all have problems, don't we? And it might not be kind of big scale of, of the people in Evil Genius. It might be... Small. I forgot to say, by the way, it's called Evil Genius because at the end of every episode, they decide were they evil or were they a genius. Should have mentioned that earlier. Um, at some point, I think we, we all are searching for a hero, all searching for someone that might, might save us. And it could be big scale, but it also could be small scale. We want someone who might save us, who might lead us out of boredom. We want someone who kind of might lead us out of kind of financial problems. We want someone who, who might fix, maybe a romantic partner, maybe a friend who might kind of fix, save us from our loneliness. We might want a new boss that kind of might save us from like an awful work life. We want someone to lead us, to save us. We want someone we can put our trust in and they all fail. Without a doubt, every human leader fails. And this psalm absolutely nails it. Take a look. Look at verse 3 with me. It just nails it so, so clean and simple. After that introduction of praise, it says, do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. This psalm, if it, it puts it really, puts it really clearly. If there is something that is going to rob you of joy, if there's something that's going to rob you of praise, it is putting all your trust into someone who will fail. Because every human leader will. No human leader can save. No human leader can live forever. There is not a single human leader that could ever save us. They're all going to fail. They're all going to die. And if... if if we put all our trust, if we put all our hope into someone, that someone might do something, well, we're just going to lose it all. Do not put your trust in princes. But this psalm is meant to lead us to praise, and no one's praising yet. Um, so there must be another option. What's this psalm going to do that's, that's going to lead us into praise as it reminds us of all these leaders that fail? And this psalm does something so simply and so beautifully. This psalm, I think, uh, does what the beginning of every kind of boxing match or every UFC fight does. Um, if anyone's ever seen either of them, at the beginning of a boxing match, you get two stat cards. Uh, you get kind of the fighter's resume. And I think this is what's about to happen here. On the one side, you have, you have human leaders. You have princes. And in the context of that, the, in this psalm, it's not royal princes. It really is influential people. You have human influential people here. And their resume, their stat card says, cannot save, is going to die. That's what you have on one side. And then this psalmist is going to present the other option. Let me read it to us again. Look at verse 5. Blessed are those who help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. 
He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed, <clears throat> gives food to the hungry, sets the prisoner free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow, and he frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations, praise the Lord. Could it be any more different? Could the stat sheets show any more difference than this? Human leader, human leader cannot save. This Lord, this Lord saves all the oppressed. And he has the power to do so because because he is the maker of heaven and earth. Human human leaders, they're going to die. But the Lord, the Lord of this psalm is faithful forever and reigns forever. And I think it, it's, it's worth dwelling on, on, on the goodness of this. This becomes a bit of a, a calling card of the Old Testament, that, that God is like this. So it's easy to, to forget how good this is. But think about it. There is no other God like this. There's no other ruler like this. This God chooses to save people that cannot save themselves. This God chooses to save people that have nothing to offer. No food, no home, no sight. This God chooses to to save people like that. And think about that. Think how different that is. Because God could have been like every other human leader, right? He could have been like every other leader. Just get, get, get the friends around him. Get, get the impressive people around. God could have chose the impressive, but no, God chooses to save the oppressed, the hungry, the blind. No, this God, this God is a good God. And this God is not going to die. It's not going to just one day go and disappear and not fulfill his promises. So what I think this psalm is doing so simply and powerfully, you've got two choices. You've got two stat sheets in front of you. Who are you going to trust? Who are you going to trust? And I think this is what gets the Israelites kind of through and and all the way to praise. Because when you see a Lord like this, the answer is simple, right? I'm going to praise the Lord. (laughs) Sack off human princes. I'm going to put my trust in the Lord. The psalm kind of offers us a a really simple choice. And it says one is going to lead to disappointment and the other is going to lead to praise. So who will you put your trust in? I think there's something else that's really quite beautiful about this psalm. As we were reflecting on this earlier, weren't we? Um, We know we all fail. We might, you might be sat here as, as someone who, who wants to put their trust in the Lord. And you read this psalm and you're like, I, I know I fail. Isn't it kind of God that to those of us that fail, he doesn't give us a slap on the wrist. He doesn't say, oh, you naughty, naughty, naughty. He gives us a song. A song that can be sung. A song that will make us step back, realize what we're doing, realizing that we we might be putting our trust in an absolute rubbish prince. He gives us a song to sing, to realize who we might be putting our trust in, 
and to turn back to the good God. And that's exactly how this psalm would have been used for hundreds of years, right? The Israelites would have sung this. Sometimes they would have sung it alone. Some, sometimes someone might think, oh, you know what, I just really need to sing that psalm. And it would reorientate them into thinking, who, who am I trusting? Sometimes they, they would have sung it all together in a, in a congregation. They would come together and they would sing psalms. And together they would realize, no, who are we putting our trust in? Well, it's obvious. We need to put our trust in the Lord. And that's how it would have been used for hundreds and hundreds of years. I thought there was something quite funny about this psalm. Something quite interesting. Um, it's a little bit of a thought experiment. This is not in the Bible. We don't know this. Um, but I'd like, I've liked to imagine what it would be like if one of the disciples, maybe not a famous disciple, not Peter, let's go for Thaddeus. If the disciple Thaddeus, if this was his favorite psalm. Just think this through with me. Um, imagine if Thaddeus, this was his favorite psalm. So one day he's kind of, um, he's in the boat with, with some of the other disciples and he's, he's singing his favorite psalm. Do not put your trust in princes, uh, but blessed is the God of Jacob. And he gets to the line, he is the maker of heaven and earth and the sea. And he's in the boat with the disciples. And, 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 as, he, and as he's in the boat, this kind of storm starts going on. And it starts small and they're kind of rowing their boat, and he's still singing the singing his song, do not trust in princes, blah, 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 blah. And he's singing his, he's singing his song, it's in his head, and all of a sudden the, the storm starts getting worse. <laughs> and then uh, water is piling into the boat, and they're freaking out. Him and all the disciples are freaking out. And there's Jesus, and he's, he's asleep <laughs> in the boat. And he starts freaking out big time. And eventually someone wakes up Jesus, just like they did in Mark 4. And Jesus gets up and he shouts to this. He doesn't even shout. He says to the, to the storm, be quiet. And all of a sudden, the storm is quiet. And I wonder if Thaddeus would just go, oh, it's interesting. I'm, I'm going to keep it quiet for now. And then he carries on and he's, he's kind of going along and he's still singing his song. Do you not be a trust in princes? Uh, the Lord is good. Uh, he gives food to the hungry. And they're, they're out in the wilderness now. And uh, Jesus' teaching is really popular. And 5,000 people have come to hear Jesus preach. And he's there with all of them. And then he's like, crap, these guys are hungry. Um, and Jesus says, oh, we're going to feed them with two loaves and a couple of fish. And he's one of the people that, that goes around and he gets the bread and he starts delivering it out. And then people are oh, starting to have a bit, oh, you want some more? And he goes back and he gets another basket of bread. And then he gives that one out and he goes back and he gets some fish and gives it out to someone else. And then all of a sudden, 5,000 people are fully fed <laughs> and there's stuff left over. And he thinks to himself, oh, the Lord gives food to the hungry. That's my favorite song, that is. And then they go, they go across the lake again and they, they find this man who has been imprisoned by a thousand demons. A thousand demons have descended upon a man and he's trapped and he's not free. And then he sees Jesus come and with a word he is free. And he's thinking, oh my goodness, this is my favorite song. This is the song I've been singing. And maybe he's not quite ready to tell the other disciples. Um, but then he's traveling with Jesus and, and Jesus spits on the ground and he gets some mud and he rubs it in someone's eyes who's blind. And when, when he wipes away the, the, the mud, the guy can see. And then he's like, the Lord gives sight to the blind? And maybe he says, okay, I'm going to tell one other person. I'm going to tell, who's a disciple? Someone. Paul? No, no, that's a wrong one. <laughs> he says, John. He says to John, like, like, I've, I've been singing this song and it's like everything that I sing just comes true before our eyes. And then, and then they're, they're, they're reclining one day in this, in this kind of meal place. And then um, they're all sitting there and, and a prostitute comes in. And everyone is so awkward about it. Thaddeus, he's finding it awkward. And then he, he sees this prostitute bow down 
start, start crying on Jesus' feet. She gets out some perfume and, and rubs his feet with it. And everyone else is, is feeling so awkward and just thinking she shouldn't be there. And then Jesus lifts her up, shows her the, the most respect. And that is goes, no, the Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. Imagine he starts putting all these pieces together. And it's like my favorite song is alive in front of me. Maybe this is him. Maybe this is the good God that we've all been told to put our trust in. Maybe this is him, and then he dies. And Thaddeus thinks, oh man, did I just put my trust in princes, in a human leader who cannot save? But he only has to wait three days, doesn't he? And then Jesus rises again. He defeats death. He ascends to reign forever. And what does Thaddeus say? Praise the Lord. Come on, it's him. It really is him. Jesus, he is the God of Jacob. He is the one that we can trust. And I like to imagine that, that he goes around singing Psalm 146 even louder with even more praise, loving it even more. It's his even more his favorite song because he's here the lord the god of jacob is here he has come to save he has done all the things that the lord said he would do it's him and i think we're basically meant to use this psalm exactly the way same way today and i, I use that word on purpose I think we're meant to use this psalm in exactly the same way. Psalms um, aren't meant to just be studied, like, oh, interesting, oh, lovely psalm. They're meant to be used. <laughs> They're meant to be used. And I know back in the day, the Israelites, they would have all memorized it as children, and they would have kind of tunes, and it would all work in Hebrew, and you know, it would all work out. We, we're out of practice. Um, I know we're out of practice, so I'm not going to get us to all memorize uh, the psalm. But I do think it is worth thinking, how am I going to use this psalm? And this is my suggestion. We're not going to memorize the whole thing. We're going to memorize one line, one line that will represent the psalm to us. We're going to memorize the line, don't put your trust in princes. Can anyone say it back to me? I'm going to say it. Don't put your trust in princes, and you say it back to me. Don't put your trust in princes. Don't put your trust in princes. Great. And I'm going to teach you. I was I'm in Army. I don't whether to do this or not. Um, I found this helpful. Um, I, I couldn't make up like a little tune for it like they would have had back in the day. Johnny did, but then I forgot it. Um, <laughs> but the, re the way I've remembered this is, uh, does anyone remember, if anyone wanted to learn how to beatbox when they were younger, um, you would have been taught to say, say boots and cats. Say boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and you're kind of beatboxing. It turns out, don't put your trust in princes kind of has the same rhythm. <laughs> don't put your trust in princes. Don't put your trust in princes. Don't put your trust in... No one might remember it like that. That's how I've been remembering it. Don't put your trust in princes. Take that. Remember that week. Whatever way you want to remember it and use it this week. Because this week, we will be tempted to put our trust in princes. All of us will be tempted to do that. It might be pursuing a relationship that we know we shouldn't because we think it might save us. Don't put your trust in princes. Don't put your trust in princes. Take that line, don't put your trust in princes, and remember that it tears you away from that and points you towards Christ. Don't put your trust in princes. No, I'm going to praise Christ. It might be that this week we're desperate to impress our, our bosses. Well, don't put your trust in princes. Don't put your trust in princes. Look away from that and turn to Christ. And I think, just like made up Thaddeus, just like Israelites, for thousands of years, 
this psalm might come alive to us as we, as we learn that human leaders, they're, they're never going to save. But Christ has. And he's worthy of praise. So don't put your trust in princes. Praise the Lord. Let me pray. Father, help us to use this psalm this week. Help us as, as we're tempted to, to not put our trust in princes. Don't put your trust in princes. Help us to see again the goodness of Christ as he is everything everything that the Lord promised he would be. And he's going to live forever. What a good God we have. Amen.